everybody. Team Bravo 615 here. And today, let's play Shadowrun Dragonfall Director's Cut. So, you may have already noticed that I started playing Shadowrun Returns here on the PS5. Um, unbeknownst to me, uh, the game is actually latent with bugs lots of bugs all the bugs and from what I'm from what I'm led to believe it's only on the console versions which incidentally I've played um, all of the Shadowrun games on PC and I've had no issues whatsoever so I know um, the original versions have no such bugs it was when they were transferred over I don't even think to PS4 because I've played these as well on the PS4 and I've had no issues I believe it was only on the PS4 Five. So, I don't know what the hell is going on. In the meantime, I have to get my nerd fix still in. Uh, a lot of you guys actually really enjoyed me playing the first Shadowrun game. So I said, you know what? The hell with it. We're going to go ahead and go right into the second one, Dragonfall. Which, actually, of the three, um, I would have to say this particular one is actually my favorite of the three. I like the collection of characters within the game and the exposition that that leads us to it. I don't want to spoil too much into it, so um, we're just going to go ahead and, and get started. So, oh, let's go. All right, so Shadowrun Dragonfall Director's Cut. The year is 2054. The promise of opportunity and anonymity draws you to the free city of Berlin. The Flux State, a grand experiment in social order. Corporations tread carefully here. Even the great dragon Laufry only has so much sway in the constantly evolving power structure of Berlin. The perfect place for a savvy Shadowrunner to disappear and begin anew. If only it were that simple. Let's get into it. So, I'm not going to bore you too much with the exposition that, um, well, the explanation that took place in the first game. Um, for those that actually were able to go through it uh, with me. Uh, as I've said before, I usually play the same character in all of these games. I know, very, very boring. So, um, deal with it. It's my it's my playthrough. So, But, uh, please feel inclined to get these games and play them for yourself. If not necessarily on the PS5, at least get them on the PC uh, if you're able to run those. I mean, they don't really take a lot of space. They're Hella fun. They're so much fun. I love these games, especially if you're big into like the XCOM strategy type, RPG type games. Please do so. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll try to give you some. I'll try to keep it light, at least as, as light as I can here for some of the the new ones coming in. Uh, since the awakening in 2012, five races have come to be considered metahuman. The races that now make up the world are dwarf, elf, human, orc, and troll. So, humans were the only race on Earth until the Awakening in 2012. Now they find themselves the definition of average or even normal. They are still the most populous race in the world and thus control many of the most powerful, moneyed, and important positions in society. All humans have a plus three to karma to start the game. So, pretty much, uh, the max basic is around nine on all the stats, body quickness, strength, charisma, intelligence, and willpower. So, uh, Elf. Many people consider elves to be the most fortunate metahumans. They are more attractive and socially accepted than the other metahuman races. Elves are taller than humans, but have more slender have a more slender build. Their hair is usually thicker, longer, and more luxurious than average, and their eyes come to a point. All elves have a plus one to charisma. Maximum stats pretty much stick around nine until you get to quickness and charisma, which are at can cap at eleven and twelve respectively. Dwarf. Dwarves are the shortest of the metahuman races, although their torso and shoulders are wider than their size would indicate. Thus, their strength is equal to, and sometimes greater than, the larger races. If any guys know anything about leverage, uh, short guys, especially short, stocky guys, are a bitch to take down. So, any of you that actually know anything about anything. So, uh, all dwarves have plus one to willpower. Max the caps on these guys usually. Uh, everything else runs pretty much the basic nine except for body, strength, and willpower, which is 11, 12, and 11. Orc. Orcs are the fastest breeding race and now are second only to humans in world population. 
Their size leads to an intimidating silhouette and a body that can take more physical damage than the average. Orcs have pointed ears and inti intimidating teeth or tusks. All orcs have a plus one to body. Their caps are around uh, on body strength and uh, let's see, yeah, 14 and 12, whereas the charisma and intelligence only come up to eight, so everything else goes at nine. Troll. Trolls are the largest metahuman race. Heavy prejudice against them has led people to believe, uh, assume trolls have lowered intelligence, but in reality, there is no proof to this. Trolls have pointed ears, intimidating teeth, or tusks, and many have horn-like growths that other metahumans do not manifest. All trolls have a plus one to body and a plus one to strength. Their stats actually cap off at a very overwhelming 17 on body and 15 on strength. Whereas uh, quickness, charisma, and intelligence all take a hit with quickness at eight, charisma at six, and intelligence at six as well, which I still think is utter complete garbage considering that they just said there's no proof of uh, trolls having lowered intelligence and yet they have a lower cap. But I digress. I play human anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, the archetypes are a nice way to create a character. They are pre-generated characters with attributes and skills tuned around a specific function. They're ready to select and play. You are not locked to this archetype, and you can grow your character however you wish. Street Samurai are freelance operatives who follow a code of street honor. They are learned in the ways of the traditional samurai warrior and in the practices of modern combat. Some sell their skills for profit, while others work to take out the dishonorable scum that seem to breed in the urban sprawl. Kind of like your uh, knight kind of uh, character, ranger, knight mixture there. Uh, mage. Mage is specialized in the casting of spells, though, not, though that doesn't mean they can't use physical weapons as well. Their spells cover a wide range of magical effects, from offensive damage attacks to character augmentation and degradation spells to healing spells. Uh, Decker. Decker has used a cyber deck to jack into the Matrix, the worldwide information grid and computer network. By projecting their minds into the world, electronic world, Deckers can find secrets others keep hidden away. They use programs and expert systems to fight off the protections that mega corporations place in their way. So, figure like your uh, modern day hackers, but going through uh, all neoing and knowing kung fu and whatnot. Shaman. Shamans believe that their magic comes from a totem that guides their life path. This relationship allows them to summon spirits and command them to do their bidding. Shamans have the ability to conjure spells that mages cannot. So just another avenue to travel for the uh, people that use magic. So Rigor. Riggers use specialized cyber tech to control small robot-like vehicles called drones with their minds. They can use this ability to provide surveillance, support, and extra firepower when required. Uh, physical adept. This one is my personal favorite. Adepts are magically active characters who focus their magic internally, seeking to reach their utmost potential physically, mentally, and spiritually. As adepts unlock new abilities, they become honed physical machines, using their magic to enhance their close combat abilities. Uh, yeah. That's why I train as hard as I do anyway. Uh, let's see. They added some new character phases, which was very nice of them. Um, okay, that one doesn't offend me too much. I kind of like that one. Um, oh, he's pretty. Kind of has my haircut right now. Ish. I just don't have the uh, neck and clavicle tattoos. Okay, that one doesn't look too bad either. With the face tattoos. Okay, not bad, not bad. And here we have the... Uh, Looks like the Chinese style mustache handlebars with the goatee with the shaved sides. Uh, let's see. Oh, he looks looks kind of like the guy I was using in the first game. Uh, I would like to try to fix what happened in that first game as well. So we will be getting back there eventually. Um. Let's see. Uh, it's okay. I kind of like Mr. Face Tattoo here. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, we got 
actually change all this? I really don't want to, so let's just uh, continue to stats. Yeah, okay. Spend your karma. Karma represents the experience of characters earn while running the shadows and achieving goals. Karma is used to improve attributes and skills. An attribute or skill rating can be increased by spending karma equal to the next increment of that rating. Thus, improving your body from 4 to 5 requires you to spend 5 karma points. Uh, you have some karma ability now to customize your character. Why do I have 34? Is there a reason I have 34? I swear to you, I did not do any sort of special code thingy doodad -ness, ness Um... Why do I have 34? That is amazing and terrifying. Um... Okay, well, I... Body... We started at four. I kind of, I kind of don't want to use it because I don't want to jinx anything. Um, we'll do ranged combat because um, again I want to have guns akimbo. Um, ha ha ha! Quickness uses the chance to hit in ranged combat. Reduces the chance to be hit by enemy attacks. I don't know why I have so much karma. I swear, guys, I did nothing. I did nothing. I did nothing. I, I, did, I did nothing. Um, yeah, strength four for she's. Um, close combat. I also don't want to go ham here. I really didn't use much on that. Do I already have that? I think I already have that. Yeah, I already have that. Okay. Uh, we'll do willpower a little bit higher, too. Alright, charisma. I gotta be all charismatic. Uh, ah, yes, the etiquettes. We'll start with the shadow runner etiquette of course um i still better get to pick one i better not have ruined that um dude that's crazy i don't know how that happened um Sure. If I got, I got five points left. Let's, let's. No, hold on. Not body. I mean, strength. Yes, I want to be strong. We're gonna be strong. All right. Um. Yes. Oh, good. I still got another one too. Okay, so I got shadow runner etiquette, and um. Let's do. Let's do street etiquette as well. Yeah, we'll do the same thing. You guys don't get my full name, I'm sorry. But you do get my shadow run handle. Maybe as the videos go down, I'll, I'll actually give you my true shadow run name I used to do on camp use on campaigns. The Harfeld Manor Run. Life was good. Easy jobs, regular pay, a reliable crew. But things went south and you had to drop off the grid. Put a bullet in the past and start fresh somewhere new. The promise of opportunity and anonymity draws you to the free city of Berlin, the Flux State. A grand experiment in social order. Corporations tread carefully here. Even the great dragon Laufri. Laufir? Laufir. That's probably love fear. Only has so much sway in the constantly evolving power structure of Berlin. The perfect place for a savvy Shadowrunner to disappear and begin anew. Deja vu. And as luck would have it, home to your old partner in crime, Monica Schaefer. It's your third run with Monica and her team. An old castle, hold fast, one hour east of Berlin, perched on a hill overlooking the countryside. The job is standard smash and grab. Crack the bolt, grab the data get out in one piece. A mediocre payday, but work is work. As the team gathers more 
for Monica's pre-run briefing. You pause to take in your surroundings. All right, the Harfield Manor, 2054, one hour east of Berlin. All right, the estate grounds are silent, save for the faint whistling of the wind. Your team gathers near a side entrance to the old castle hold fast, cloaked in darkness. The night is peaceful. You know it won't last. You know it for what it is, a pleasant illusion that will shatter at the sound of the first gunshot. Listen up, folks. Monica Schaefer, you ran with her back in the day. Watched her get her first Adijak. Now she's your team leader and a Drek hot Decker to boot. We're on a tight timetable. I want to enter the estate, find the basement, open the data vault, extract the files, and bolt. Ten minutes. Top to bottom. Trying to get home in time for worm talk, love? Dietrich, shaman, the old man of the team. He smiles at her. His facial tattoos writhing in the moonlight. Monica eyes, Monica's eyes twinkle with mischief. Maybe. How many times have I told you, you can't trust anything that comes out of a dragon's mouth. That trid trash will rot your brain. She grins. It's educational. Besides, this should be a milk run. Security's supposed to be light and a few automatic weapons. No armor. With a little luck, they'll never know we were here. All right, and we're supposed to have some sort of history with her. Uh, let's see. Just like old times, eh? Monica's smile returns, more wistful this time. The moonlight catches her face at a strange angle. Yeah, just like old times. Milk run or not, we should be careful. Glory, razor-clawed street samurai. Her voice is cold and neutral. Her expression, placid. They may only be private security, but their bullets don't know that. I can patch you up if I have to, but I'd rather not have to. You people need to relax. We're professionals, remember? Monica raises her arm and speaks into her wrist-mounted comm link. A darkened face shimmers on the view screen. Iger, are you in position? The comm link crackles, and the response comes back low and soft. Softer than you'd expect from a troll. Affirmative. The alarm lines have been cut, and I have a clear line of fire on the estate service entrance. When you exit the building, the path will be clear. Excellent. Thank you, Iger. Just doing my job. Iger, out. The comm link goes dark. Monica winks at you as she drops her arm. See? We're professionals. All right, people. Enough chatter. Our client wants the data from the vault, so we get him the data from the vault. Quick, quiet, and quick. You said quick twice. <laughs> she grins. Worm talk is on the night. Glory raises an eyebrow. Slightly. I told you. It's educational. Get your stuff and we'll head in. Alright, let's grab our gear. Alrighty. Your gear and some weapons lay in the back. Grab a weapon. Uh, again... I like to do the rifle just as an in-case. Uh, we got our trusty AK-97 again, the most common assault rifle in the world. And the rest of our kit, huh? What do we got here? Killing hands. Hey, look! We grabbed a spell out of the van. It's probably a scroll. All right, and ooh, and an Esprit flashbang grenade. Esprit's basic non-lethal grenade does negative one AP to everyone hit by its blast. Makes targets easier to hit. So it actually removes action points from them. And then your basic med kit, uh, 10 HP. Most basic med kit heals you or any team member consume when used, can be used outside of combat. Ah, Bumona Trauma Kit. Restores a teammate to life with 25% of their total health, consumed when used or on death. All right, you grab your running gear from a worn duffel bag near the end weaponry. Leave the van. All righty. As I crawl, trying to keep up with the team. Hey, why did she despawn? Why? Is she, why did he? Why did she despawn? Why did he despawn? Why is everyone despawning? That's not a good sign. Uh, that's not a good sign. Okay, end of the matter. Objective complete. We have entered the building. Keep team alive. That seems like a loaded objective. 
All right, a private museum. The owner of this state must have money to burn. All right. A variety of remarkably well-preserved Slavic artifacts. Nice. Uh, here we go. The complete skeleton of a theropod dinosaur. It appears to be genuine. All right, what do we got up here? The vase in this case looks both very old and very valuable. A fine scroll work of lapis and gold leaf decorates its exterior, and the interior shimmers with the organic beauty of abalone shell. Your fixture could probably move this thing in a heartbeat. You can't help but notice that the glass encasing it looks awfully flimsy. Uh, okay, Vase, you're coming with me. As you draw your arm back to smash the glass, Dietrich catches it. His gnarled hand tightens around your wrist. Not a smart move, Kleiner. We have a job to do, and holding a great big vase around isn't part of it. Dietrich offers you a toothy grin. Unless the vase figured into your plans to complete the mission somehow. Did you have a vase-oriented strategy that I was unaware of? Uh, I get your point. The payday from the run will have to do. I was thinking we could use it to smuggle Monica into the vault. <laughs> That's such a smart-ass answer. I love it. The vase is going to earn me a nice bonus. It can stay where it is for now, but I'm coming back for it. Uh, I like I, I like this one. We're going to use that because it's funny. Dietrich stifles a chuckle. Ah, excellent. An excellent plan, Team Bravo. I support it fully. We should get moving, though. We mustn't keep the others waiting. <laughs> that was awesome, though. Uh, the cask in this display case is decorated with in inlaid panels of ivory scripture. Alrighty, what else we got here? Oh, Intel says the elevator should be to the north. Alright, but what's to the south? I'm just curious. He what the hell? Well, it's a good thing I stumbled in here. Combat move in. Welcome to combat. To move your active character, use the L stick. Select the tile and X to move there. Depending on the distance, this will cost one or more action points. Once you're happy with the position, press square to open your character's skills. All right, you are now in turn-based combat mode. Each character in your team has an action pool. Spend these spend these actions on movement attacks or using spells and item. Once your team is, comple is complete, the enemy team will move and attack. Additional tutorial information is available from the reference guide, which can be accessed in the upper right corner of your PDA menu. Goody. All right, I'm going to try to do this as quietly as possible. Uh, skill selection. Yes, I know this. You select the skill using the stick. I got it. Okay, and then select it. I got it. I can do that. Uh, uh, all right, well, select target using the L stick. Okay, and then X to confirm. I am the target. Now, let me, let me put these hands on you. Oh, I can't just yet. All right, how about, how about, do any of you have haste? Ah, good. Dietrich, my main man. My main man, Dietrich, has haste. Increase the effort. Target's ability by one AP for two rounds. Yes, him. All right, so, now that I've gained an additional move, Let's go shake hands with him, shall we? All right. I don't know if that's silenced, but we're going to try it. Okay. Uh, so I guess there's more people here as to why we still have... I don't see anyone. Just in case, I'm going to have her take cover. All right. Well, it's a terminal. I need her in there. Just in case. All right. Oh, never mind. Okie dokie, then. Security node. Security alert response plan. Quebec 6. Matrix operations locked. HDR team responding. Uh-oh. Somebody hit a switch. Uh, well, since I am not a decker... That skill is locked to me. Hey, Monica, you think you can crack this? The corner of her mouth is lifts into a smirk. Step aside. Oh, and Team Bravo, I've got to ask. Is the display on your trip flashing 12 o'clock back at home? That was uncalled for. 
Monica doesn't even bother jacking into the terminal, and her cyberdeck remains slung over her shoulder. Her fingers flick over the terminal's virtual keyboard, and the moment later, a happy chime chirps out of the security node speakers. Bingo. Doors open. Let's go. Well, you know, thanks, but that was a little rude, Monica, I'm just saying. All right. Just because I love getting myself into trouble, let's open another door. Hey, here you go. You want to get in here? Select the decker to jack in. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, so we got to give you cover, lady. Uh, you're going to move over there. Ah, you guys are in for a treat. We got some cyber combat going on. All right, so I can't move the deck. She's got our programs already. We have Blaster Level 2, an area effect matrix attack that deals uh, 75 IP damage to both ice and deckers. Uh, Erosion Level 2 erodes integrity points of ice, does negative 75 IP damage with ongoing 25 IP for two rounds. Oh, so it's kind of like uh, poison, almost. Medic level 2 heals yourself or a friendly target for 60 IP, and suppression level 1 reduces alarm state by 4. Um, as you're in the Matrix, and ice continues to detect your position, you actually, if the alarm, the state of alarm will go higher and higher. If it gets too high, it'll actually dump you out of the system, uh, sometimes causing damage. So that's where something like this comes into play. So Monica, she's going in. And uh, we're going to give her cover. I kind of wish I had her further in, but it is what it is. Uh, I'm going to hide behind this plant. Because that's what heroes do. Uh, just in case. Just in case. I am going to activate that. And now I'm going to... I'm, I'm going to stand out in the open. Because, again, that's what heroes do. All right. Who is this? Glory? Glory's going to stay here if she can actually heal. But, uh, just because I don't want her too far from Monica. Okay. I'll get in front of her at least just to, just to kind of have her there. Now, she's got some hand razors that are basically like Wolverine claws, a basic swipe with hand razors. Her, I definitely want to level up because she can do some nasty attacks with those. Um, I don't think anyone else can do anything else, so we'll just end our turn. Ah! Who shot me? Oh, you. You shot me. Okay, welcome to the Matrix. The Matrix help slide will give you a rundown on some of the features you'll encounter navigating through cyberspace, including system trace, matrix combat, and watcher eyes. Okay. Well, yeah, here we go. And we have enemy ice. So, essentially, I can actually force eject, which, I, if I'm not mistaken, causes damage as well. So, while I'm here... You have Overwatch unlocked for your character's weapon. Overwatch allows you to ready a skill until the enemy comes into its range, allowing them to use that skill before the enemy's turn is over. So basically, it gets you get a sneak attack in. Um, we're gonna leave that there, but I am gonna attack. We're gonna use basic attack. Yeah, we're gonna use a basic attack. Let's try you. 50, and now I'm going to try to get some cover. Oh, I still got another... Oh, goody. Let's do another attack. Well, let me set that there. There you go. I got a free hit. And you missed me. Switch current character. Your team consists to multiple people and or summons each of them with their own AP and skills. To cycle through them while in movement mode, all is okay. Just up and down on there. Uh, now we're good. All right, I know how to switch weapons. You don't have to remind me. I want to take you out. And... Oh, I have another one. 
I'm gonna hit you again. Just because I want you out of the way. And now I'm going to move over here. Kinda wish I already had Overwatch mode set, but that's okay. That's okay. Let's go back on this side. Ah, you missed again. Stupid. You are stupid. Now I'm gonna go back over here. And I'm gonna set Overwatch mode over here. And there you go. Ha! You suck. You are dead. All right, I'm alone on the floor now. Oh, I was alone on the floor. Ooh, that thing got some movement. All right, I have been officially attacked and I don't like it. So let's haste you again. Uh, no. Can I not? Oh, I, I have to move out first. All right. Let me go over here. And now let me do it. Oh, I can't do it. Oh, a bitch. All right, I can at least heal. I just realized there's two people there. I heal myself. All right. But I go over there and shake hands with you. I can't see him. But he's flanked, so let's take him out. Let's go, big boy. Ooh, 23. Nice. Alright. Let me shoot you. Can I shoot? Oh, yeah. Take you out. And now I'm gonna move. I too will take cover behind this plant. This plant will protect me. All right, back to the matrix. Let me try something a little heavier on you. What do we got? Uh, erosion. All righty, so a little uh, a heavier duty attack. Uh, let's go over here. I wasn't done with you, but that's okay. Either way, you're eroded, so... Get dead. I would like to hack this thing, please, and thank you. Alright, payday. Antiquities delivery schedule. Okay. Oh, so this isn't even the, the main one. Oh, okay, that was just a... Okay, cool, a subset. We can do that. So out we go. All right, so back to us. I'm gonna shake your hand. With my fist to your face. I hit him so hard his face exploded. That was amazing. Hey, so that's how you're supposed to react when combat's done. You're supposed to follow me. Man, only the first game did that like it was supposed to. Alright. Come on. I'm hitting the X button. Yeah, we got more. More company. Ooh. One, two, three, four. And I don't know what all's out there. Alright. So I need to think a little bit smarter. I want some cover. Well, let me, let me see. Let me switch over to this for now, because I know I'm not going to be able to get much further. I'm going to take cover right here. Just so I'm covered. And now, no one exposed. There's a mage. I'd love to take him out, but... At least this guy's out in the open. All right. Let me get over.
over here. Also behind cover. Uh, let's work the same guy, I guess. Missed, okay. All right, glory. That's two. I don't like the idea of not being in cover, but that's okay. Uh, can I haste myself? Pretty sure I can. Ooh, I can summon. Yeah, let's do that. Let's summon. Oh, I don't have enough AP. Really? I guess because he's too far. All right. Well. I want behind cover. So at least they're behind cover. All right. Missed. You oh, missed and then four damage. All right. Hey, you got all close, like. Let's uh, let's shake hands, shall we? And one more, because I don't like you. That's a pretty decent covered spot. And now... Now let's work on the mage. Yeah, I had a feeling. Alright. Get a little closer. Let's take our shot. Really? 38%? Damn it. Can I summon you? I can. Summon spirit. Apocalypse, you say. Alrighty. Devour. Oh, I need to get over there. I need to get over to you. If nothing else, at least to draw fire. You're one ugly son of a bitch. All right. All right. Where's their ley line? I don't see any ley lines here. All right. We'll go over here. Hang out with the. Uh, with glory. Missed. Ow. Lest missed. Alright. Say hi to you then. You need to die. Alright. Can I heal you from here? Yes, I can. Good. Uh, let's move a little closer. And let's try to get this mage. Alright. Can I get you from here? Oh, I can't. I'm literally just out of range. All right, so I'm gonna come up this way, because I'm sure from here, I'll be nice and close. I'm coming to say hi. All right. Uh, yeah, let's give him two AP. Now, you... What do you mean, no targets available? He's literally right there. How close to him do I have to be? A 
mouth of teeth that rips your flesh and does a minimum of 7 HP damage. I have no targets for that. That's crazy. Alright then. Let me just... Where am I? Am I technically right there? Okay, I'm right there technically. Let's go right here. Okay, I'm right on you. There you go. Oh my. Yeah, you better run from that thing. It's gonna kill you. Alright. I'm gonna leave that for her. You, I'm gonna take out. Alright, mage is dead. Alright. Shot him. We can do it again. Alright. Glory's gonna say hi. Okay, good. Like, so we don't want him to escape. Cause that would be a bad, bad thing. Let's see. Ooh. That's a no. We don't want that acid stream. Well, I can get them from here, maybe. Oh, yeah. Now he's all acid -ed 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 -ed. Can I? What can I do with that? What's that? R1. Banish spirit? Yeah, sure. We're done with you. Uh, can I actually hit you from here? It says I can. Let's try it. No. Missed. It's covered in acid, though, so... Oh, and he's bleeding. Alrighty. I guess we got through. Yay, good job, guys. You're about to transition to a new location. Continue. Yes. The Harfeld Manor Run. So far, so good. If your skirmish with security set off any alarms, you don't hear them. Monica leads the rest of the team downward into the basement of the Harfeld Manor. Your payday is waiting. The data vault lies ahead. Dietrich eyes the door, then turns to Monica. This is a big freaking vault, Liebchen. Bigger than on schematic. The schematic didn't have a date. Our client may have old intel. Still, our instructions were clear. The data we're looking for should be just on the other side of this door. Monica combs her a hand through her hair, parting it to reveal the black plastic sheath of her data jack. A quick jaunt into the matrix, a little digital hand waving, and I'll have this thing wide open. Be right back. A burst of static trackles, crackles through tiny speaker on Monica's comlink. Iger, still in position outside the estate. Hold on, Monica. Who's in charge while you're jacked in? Monica rolls her eyes. Dietrich fixes his stare intently on the vault door. Glory looks cold and distant, just as she always does. We've been through this before, Iger. You're not in the KSK anymore, and that chain of command nonsense doesn't fly in the shadows. We don't need rules and regulations to guide us. The same principles that apply to the flux state. Please, spare me the lecture. Your politics have nothing to do with this. Best get used to it, Iger Love. She sighs. Look, it's a simple question. Years of experience tell me that it needs an answer. Iger's right, Monica. We should have a second in command, just in case. I agree with Dietrich. If someone needs to take charge, it'll happen. And we don't have time for this, Iger. We have a job to do. Uh, I actually kind of agree with Iger in this one. Just in case. I need someone in charge. Monica stares at you a moment, clearly irritated. Then that twinkle appears in her eye again. She smiles at you as she speaks into the, her comm link. Very well. We'll do this one Iger's way. While I'm jacked in, Team Bravo's in charge. There is a pause. Then Iger's voice crackles out of the comlink again. Team Bravo, did I hear that right? You're putting the rookie in command? Uh, let's see. I'm no rookie, Iger, and you know it. I thought you were a pro, Iger. Questioning orders in front of the team isn't exactly a pro move, is it? Listen, Iger, you ask for a decision, you got one. I like the middle one. I, you know, I thought you were a pro, Iger. Questioning orders in front of a team isn't a pro move, is it? 
This is ridiculous. Clear the comm, rookie. Now. Monica nods at you. The smile has disappeared from her face. Listen, Monica, I know this is a joke to you, but I'm telling you. Iger. Monica's tone is all business. Evidently, she's had enough. The decision's made. You have your answer. Acknowledged. Without another word, Iger's image flickers and fades from Monica's communicator. Sorry about that. Iger can be inflexible. The legacy of a long military career, but she knows what she's doing, and she means well. Well, you know, I get it. It is a legitimate concern. She hardly knows me. Monica's eyes narrow. There's a thin line between concern and insubordination. You'll let me know if she crosses it. Okay, enough chatter. Let's get this done. Monica turns it towards the door, the finger poised on the controls of her cyber deck, then glances back at you with a grin. See you on the other side. Then she punches it, projecting her consciousness into cyberspace, her fingers harmonizing in the smooth rhythm staccato that only an expert decker can achieve. Tickety clackety clackety clickety clackety. That wasn't normal. Without Warnica, Mon without without Warnica, without warning, Monica's back arches violently and her head jerks back, silencing her terrible screams. Muscle spasms ripple through her face, and her jaw snaps shut, sending a mist of blood spraying from between her teeth. You look down to see a nub of pink flesh hit the floor, the tip of her tongue. The room explodes into action. Glory leaps towards Monica, her hand outstretched to yank the cord from her data jack. Dietrich surges forward to wrap the team's fallen Decker in a bear hug, holding her against the convulsions that rack her body. With Monica's unearthly scream still ringing sharply in your head, you are only dimly aware of the door slamming shut behind you. Uh, let's see. Help Glory pull the plug on the data jack, smash Monica's cyber deck, or help Dietrich hold her down. Um, everyone else seems to kind of have it covered. I'm going to smash the deck. The cyber deck was constructed to withstand a bomb blast. Try as you might, you can't manage to crack its casing, let alone damage its internal circuitry. While you beat on the deck in vain, Glory manages to yank the cord out of Monica's head. A wisp of oily blue smoke traces its way from her data jack to the ceiling. The ooh, commingled sense of charred meat and ozone fill the air. You've seen the effects of biofeedback before, but nothing like this. Oof. Of course we get a picture. Suddenly, Monica's eyes flutter open. Muscle tremors continue to distort her face, and blood oozes between her lips. You see the muscles in her jaw tensing, and the, light, the look of concentration in her eyes. She's struggling to speak. Uh, if only I had Biotech 3. Let's see, talk to me, Monica. What are you trying to say? Just stay with us, Monica. Okay, we're going to get you out of here. Just stay with us. I know her. she's trying to speak, but she can. Uh, save your breath. Glory's base is strained. She's had a stroke. A bad one. She'll be dead before we even get back to the van. Let's see. Um, damn it, what the hell happened to her in there? Slowly, painfully, Monica wrestles her jaw open. The blood welled up in her mouth comes out in a slick covering her chest. She expels a thick, guttural sound that might be a word. Satisfied, she closes her eyes and forces her mouth to make the shape she needs. Fe fear. With an effort, Monica opens her eyes again and meets yours. You see pain and fear in her gaze, and something else. Hope? Fear swing. Fear swing. Huh. Deutsch. We are in Berlin after all. A sudden spasm jerks Monica's head back again. She grunts. Then her chin drops to her chest and her head lolls to one side. Her eyes fix on an object in the next room a computer terminal. The soft light of a cursor blinks on its recessed screen. Slowly, she attempts to speak again but the only sound that emerges is a long, strangled croak. A look of resignation washes over Monica's face, and she stops fighting. Her gore-slick jaw goes slack, and she dies. 
so much for keeping the team alive. Oh, hey, we're on the cut. No, Monica, this isn't happening. This can't be happening. We got hostiles. This clearly isn't a data vault. We need to get out of here fast. And I just took some hella damage there. Um. Ah, I have competing musics. Let's heal me, shall we? Alrighty. Uh, yeah, let me get some killing hands going on here. I need to kill some hands. I need to kill with some hands. I need to show these people what these hands are for, son. Alright, let's see. Okay, so that's cover there. Let me go over here. See what I can do with this. I can't get you. You're out in the open. Uh, I can't get you. Alright. Can I do anything with this? Well, I might be able to get you without leave me out in the open. Alright, at least I hit him. Missed. Haha. -ha. Alright. Side of you, they got him. And let's see, got you here. Take you out. I missed you. How did I miss you? I missed you again. You need to stop missing. There we go. Like you need to stop getting missed. He changed his mind. He wanted to go that way, and then he changed his mind. So now we'll take him out. All right, terminal active. All right. Let's see, shall we? Terminal MCPOS Building Maintenance Software Version 101 Command Line Interface Internal Memories Checksum Invalid Team Bravo, Team Bravo, Team Bravo, Team Bravo Why is it repeating my name? Dietrich scans the room nervously They've sealed the door behind us We've got to find another way out of here What are you doing? Okay Well, if I had known this I think Monica may have been, But I don't know, decking So Monica was trying to tell me something about this terminal It must be important uh, well, any ideas? Something tells me you're going to have much more company soon. Uh, let's see. I don't know yet. Watch my back while I figure this out. Dex continues to scroll down the terminal. A problem has been detected with a core component of MCPOS. Restore MCPOS to factory default settings. Warning. Restore is process will take several minutes to execute. Connecting doors and peripherals will be disarmed when complete. Still, Team Bravo, Team Bravo, Team Bravo, hit Y key. Processing request, 0% complete. As you watch, the number on the screen slowly begins to climb. This is going to take a while. You glance down at the second screen to, this, to see that, that the facility is on high alert. In a place of a simple data vault, it seems you stumbled upon some kind of massive underground complex. A map of the holdfast grounds indicates that security forces are en route from multiple angles. The doors currently being rebooted by the system's restore process are flashing a dull red. If you're reading this display correctly, the only exit from the room is the holdfast old service entrance on the western side of the building. At that moment, Iger's image winks onto your cobbling with a crackling sound. The image is grainy, flickering in and out. What's going down out what's going on down there, rookie? Talk to me. Iger, new extraction point. Uh, let's see, Monica's down Iger, the bolt was a setup. Hold up, where's Monica? Uh, let's see, I'm sorry, Monica. Iger, Monica didn't make it. Now we have to get out of here, look for an old service entrance to the west of the main grounds. You're running with you there. Down, we'll be exiting via an old service route. Let's get down to business with her. Iger's silence is thick, but when she finally responds, her tone is professional. Roger that, she cuts out without another word. Glory turns to face you. Her movement's smooth and robotic. Her voice comes out in a frosty monotone. What's the play, Team Bravo? Uh, our escape route will open in a minute. We hold 
tight until then. Uh, let's see. I say we kill every dreadhead who enters this room. How does that sound? Want to found a way to open the doors. What's it going to take? But it's going to take some time. Uh, our escape room will open in a minute. We hold tight until then. By hold tight, you mean sit here and fry anyone who comes through the door, don't you? Uh, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Dietrich's pain expression twists into a mask of hate. His hands begin to glow with primal energy. I can do that. I thought so. The door locks, disarms, we make a break for it. Until then, we make them pay for Monica. Dietrich and Glory nod in agreement. Okay, so now I have to survive for nine turns. And here, uh, now we have eight turns. So that's... Anyone else coming? Oh yes, they're coming from the back. It's a drone. It's a drone. My first fray into a drone. Okay, well... Uh, I will get in position. But, I'll get in the position on the next video. That's going to do it for this one, folks. Um, I forgot this game actually just kind of throws you right in the middle of it. Hopefully, when I um, when I reboot this on the next video, uh, not all the music is <laughs> competing with each other. So, this might be playing uh, with your heads a little bit, guys. Sorry about that. But, uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. I'm Team Bravo 5. It's been real. It's been fun. It's been real fun. And I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.